YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. If any of you guys have a 50 series card and you're playing any modern single player titles that just run horribly, I want to talk to you guys about DLSS frame generation. Lately, I've been playing Elder Scrolls Oblivion Remastered, Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl, and I've been checking out the Dune Creator Benchmark mode. The game hasn't come out yet, but it looks interesting. Now, what is, what's one thing that these games have in common? It's Unreal Engine 5. And what's the go with Unreal Engine 5? Unreal Engine 5 runs very, very poorly. Horribly, even with the top-end hardware. And considering these games aren't latency sensitive too much, it's not like it's an online shooter. I'm willing to muck around with DLSS multi-frame generation if I can get a much smoother experience without ruining image quality with something like DLSS. But even that's the case, uh, just using normal DLSS sometimes won't actually fix the frame rate issue because it's just how the game engine is. It just runs so poorly. So multi-frame generation can be pretty clutch here. Now, yes, you can just use normal frame generation, but multi-frame generation will stack even more. You can get even more fake frames. Now, the reason why I'm also doing this video is there is a way to get it to work for unsupported games. So at the moment, Oblivion Remastered isn't supported for multi-frame generation in the NVIDIA app. This thing here. And either is the June create a benchmark mode. I want to show you guys today how you can actually get that to work in the unsupported games. So to do this today, we're going to need the NVIDIA app and we're also going to need something called NVIDIA Profile Inspector, okay? And I found a little bug, a little weird thing with the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. We can force multi-frame generation in there, but it doesn't work unless the NVIDIA app is installed regardless of the NVIDIA app settings. And that's even for trying to get it to work for unsupported games. So please just have the NVIDIA app installed as well, even if you're not using it. And I found a little weird bug there, but I was able to get it to work because I'd set times four for multi-frame generation in Inspector. It wouldn't work. Yet if I had the app installed, it would work, even though it was for an unsupported game. Very odd, but I just thought I'd mention that here. Now there is something called smooth motion that NVIDIA have added as well that you can do for games that don't have DLSS support. And it's supposed to work like frame generation. Um, and this guy here who's done a review on it had a little bit of luck with the Callisto Protocol, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, the Medium, Resident Evil 4 remake. Now my experience with Smooth Motion is I found it very, very difficult to get it to work for anything. And also it would crash a bunch of my games. So I feel like this tech isn't quite there yet. But it's definitely interesting, but I'm not going to be covering that today. Today I just want to cover multi-frame generation for those three games that I've mentioned that run very, very poorly. Now here's Oblivion Remastered. We're on 4K native res and we're only getting about 110 FPS. It's not very playable for me. I know I sound like a crying baby, but I also need to enjoy a somewhat smooth frame rate on a 240Hz display to make the gameplay a little bit smoother. I'll show you my graphics settings here. Now generally speaking, when it comes to single player games, I will turn some settings down that affect frame rate a lot, but generally I'll try to keep things mostly ultra if I can. I'll just turn things down that actually make a, a big difference with scaling with um, frame rate, okay? And because a lot of these games have forced TAA, TAA has a lot of smear. I find DLSS DLAA's implementation a lot better with less smear, add a little bit of sharpening to it. Um, yes, I do lose a few more frames with it, but it's not going to matter when we have multi-frame generation, as you will see soon here. So just native, we're getting about 110 FPS at 22 milliseconds input lag. Let's go ahead and put frame generation on. This is not multi-frame generation, just frame generation and see what happens. I'll go ahead and turn that on here. Now it's made a frame up go up to about 180 and we're getting roughly, let's say 30 millisecond input lag. So it's made our input lag come up quite a lot, but this doesn't really matter too much for a single player game. What if we go do multi-frame generation? We're gonna to have to exit the game for that. So to enable multi-frame generation, we'll simply go to the NVIDIA app, go to graphics. And if the game is supported, it'll show up here, kind of like Stalker. And then you'd scroll all the way down until you would see DLSS override frame generation. And here we could do four times. But as you guys can see here, Oblivion isn't really supported here. And either is the June benchmark. So we're going to have to do it through NVIDIA Profile Inspector. We can do it globally through NVIDIA Profile Inspector. So don't be overwhelmed here. Just keep it on the global profile. We will scroll down and we'll look for DLSS FG enable DLL override. Go ahead and turn that on. And then multi-frame generation count. 
go ahead and put that in four times. Press apply changes on the top. And then let's go launch the game and see the changes. Okay, we have multi-frame generation on now, times four. And we're getting about 330 FPS. I know it's fake frames here, but honestly, this makes the gameplay so much more enjoyable and our latency hasn't really come up anymore at all. And it's actually just a smooth experience. Um, you know, and it's not like using normal DLSS where it's lowering the resolution or anything, using some kind of algorithm. The game is native 4K, um, and I wasn't able to play the game without this. So this is really nice. Now, before I boot up Stalker 2, I'll just show you guys how you can revert that thing in NVIDIA Profile Inspector. So just reopen it, go down here, where you have Enable DLL Override and Multi-Frame Generation Count. There's a little, little button next to Inspector here you can click on, and it will revert it to default. We'll just click it for both and then press apply changes okay so that'll revert it back to default okay this is stalker 2 and the kind of settings that i'm running mostly high but i will turn some things down that actually affect frame rate because i like to get the most out of it once again i do like to use dlss nvidia dllaa because otherwise there's just too much smearing with normal taa and dlla's implementation of taa is much better so those are the settings that i am running we're getting about 110 FPS with 32 milliseconds input lag, so it's not very, very good. This game is probably one of the worst that I have ever seen when it comes to optimization. And I know Unreal Engine 5 is bad, but the way this game was coded just is the icing on the cake. It's horrible. Let's go ahead and turn frame generation on. Just the normal frame generation. Just like times two. We can do that in the game here. We'll turn it on. And I'll apply the settings. So we've gone from 110 to 177 fps and our input lag hasn't changed at all that's just how bad this game is okay let's try multi-frame generation for soccer 2. we don't use need to use inspector this time because it's actually an official supported game in the nvidia app we'll go to graphics here stalker 2 scroll down and you'll find dlss override frame generation we'll put it in four times that's all we need to do there and we bit up the game. Now with multi-frame generation, we're almost getting 350 FPS and our latency is literally still the same. And this game is much, much more playable. Which is really nice. Now say we wanted to revert that in the NVIDIA app, we would simply open the NVIDIA app, we'll go back right where we were, Stalker 2, scroll down, and we would simply set DLSS override frame generation to use the 3D application setting default. That's how we would reset it back. Now side note guys, Stalker 2 is actually one of my favorite franchises and my favorite games. I'm a big fan and it's a real shame because this game just runs so poorly and it's not quite the same as the originals. I've recently played the originals and they still hit the same. I don't know what it is, but this game just doesn't do it for me. I'm actually part of a Discord C Consciousness and I've played a majority of mods that have been translated in English because I'm such a big fan of this game. And it's just a real shame that a game that I've been waiting for a long, 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 long time to come out. It's just no good. Real shame there. So how about Dune Awakening? At least the, you know, the creation benchmark that's come out so far. Now, this has been one of my favorite movies uh, in a long time as of late. The movies were great, one and two. Anyway, so these are the settings that I'm running. And once again, I will always tune settings to maximize the frame rate with still making the game look really good. So these are the settings that I'm running for this. Let's go see what kind of frame rate we're getting in the benchmark. So it's very, very similar. About 130 FPS and 22 milliseconds input lag. So really not ideal. I couldn't really see this very playable for me. The game comes out. So let's just try normal frame generation. We'll go ahead and we'll turn that on. It's cool in this game, you've got AMD frame generation and NVIDIA frame generation. So today we're just going to be talking about NVIDIA frame generation because we can use multi-frame generation. So I've gone from like 130 to 190 FPS. And the input lags come up a little bit here. Let's go ahead and force multi-frame generation because the game isn't supported in the, in the NVIDIA app. Once again, we'll go DLSS, FG, multi-frame generation count to four times and enable DLL override for DLSS FG to on. Then we hit apply out the very top. Then we go ahead and boot the game. All right, with multi-frame generation, now we're seeing about 400 FPS here. Um, but our input lag has actually come up quite a little bit, maybe too much. Okay, I decided to retest and I actually found the PCL rating not right. And this game is quite buggy when it comes to PCL reading the values properly. So we'll just ignore the PCL values for this. 
The game is also quite buggy with settings to um, every time I relaunch the game, I have to reapply the graphics settings, even if I try doing it in the config and setting it to read only, which is a little frustrating. But I wanted to show you guys another game that didn't have the official multi frame gen support, um, but we could actually make it work. These tests are conducted with these specs. Do not expect identical results on your hardware. That said, you can expect similar scaling with my recommendation. Okay, to summarize, Oblivion Remastered wasn't supported, but we were able to force multi-frame gen in the drawbar. We've got average frames, 1% low average, and 0.1% low average. We have our import lag here, 22 milliseconds import lag here. At 4K, we get about 112 FPS. With just normal frame gen on in-game, our latency goes up to 27 milliseconds input lag, and we get about 190 FPS. What's interesting here is our 1% lows actually go down a little bit. So that's quite interesting with frame gen. It actually kind of ruins our 1% lows a little bit. And then multi-frame generation, which is the only way to get the game playable for me, 30 milliseconds input lag. So, and we're getting 330 FPS, even though it's fake frames. And the 1% lows seem to be a little bit better than just normal frame gen, which is kind of interesting. But I mean, is it fake 1% lows? More than likely, who knows? Now, this is playable, right? Only an eight millisecond input lag, extra you know only eight milliseconds extra input lag um but the the frame rate is much more smoother even though it's high input lag it's a single player game and this is the only way to get the game playable for me all right stalker 2 at 4k we're getting about 113 fps 32 milliseconds input lag with just normal frame generation we get 178 um fps and it looks like our one percent lows have doubled and obviously they're fake but and uh, input lag hasn't actually really changed yet. I think the game is so badly optimized. I really don't understand why the input lags come down here. It, it shouldn't have. It, it should have gone up, if anything. But I think this the game runs so poorly. Uh, it's, it's at that point where it doesn't matter. And then we do multi-frame generation. We get about 338 FPS. And now input lag doesn't really change. Maybe it comes up a little bit slightly. Um, and yeah, our 1% lows are kind of harmed a little bit. But honestly, if you actually play the multi-frame generation, it's... A much better experience that's how i would play the game and it's pretty much the same input lag just because the game runs so poorly which is interesting all right we have june awakening the benchmark 4k we get about 18 milliseconds input lag at 130 fps with frame gen on our input lag comes up quite a little bit um and 190 fps and then multi-frame generation 360 fps and the rating was completely broken there guys i i tried it as well in the character customization um, and the readings were off the charts. So clearly multi-frame generation just breaks frame view for getting a latency reading at all. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of interesting. So multi-frame generation really comes in clutch for those single player games that just run really poorly and you don't care about added latency. You just want a smooth experience. Now I feel really sorry for single player gamers that have a 40, 80, right? Um, they would almost be better off with a 50, 60 Ti if they play single player games uh, with games that are really badly optimized. You would honestly be better off with like a 5060 Ti using multi-frame generation in those single player games rather than like a 4080 on, on native or even just normal frame generation. It's pretty disgusting and I really hope Nvidia look at bringing multi-frame generation to all cards because there's no reason they can't. I feel like it's just a software lock to try to force people to buy their new cards. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Hope you found it useful. And for you guys that have a 5000 series card and playing single player games, Please consider using this. It's really, really nice. It makes the games actually playable. Take care. Have a good weekend. I'll see you guys later. Bye. If you'd like your BIOS, Windows, PC, Game Fresh, tuned and optimized, check out my PC service.